All right. Yeah, it looks good. Everything looks all right. We change the keyboard camera up a little bit. I'm not, I need to change it a little bit more. One, I want to get the book out of here so you can actually see the keyboard. So I need to like have a better stick or something to put the keyboard camera on uh, and, and have that happen. Um, but I think it's gonna be okay. I think it's gonna be all right for now. I like having the, <laughs> I love how every streamer does that. It's like, you gotta look at, you gotta look at your stream and be like, it's over here. Up above me that way is the keyboard camera uh, and have it point that way. Anyways, uh, so I spent some time earlier today working on the Google FUBAR program that I got uh, or code challenge, whatever that I got. Uh, and I've, I've, I came up with the core solution of it of basically the, the big trick is like you generate this list of prime numbers and mush them all together as into one big string and then it needs to be 10,000 of them. So. That's kind of what this is. I've got another way that I want to try that that I think is going to be faster and I'll test the two and see which one actually works. Uh, but in the meantime, what I want to do uh, on a Discord I'm on, and let me make sure I've got everything closed that I should, yeah, I do. On a Discord that I'm on, somebody was talking about the trick of coming up with like example sentences. And something I found a while ago is the Harvard sentences, which I spelled all that completely wrong, which these are sentences that are used to basically do some audio testing uh, that was come up in 1965, blah, 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 phonetically balanced Harvard sentences. So add the sum of the products to th add the sum, add the sum to the product of these three thieves who rob friends deserve jail, right? So it's a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, hello. Hello. How's everybody? Welcome. Uh, so yeah, so I'm making new versions of Lorem Ipsen. Um, or not new versions of Lorem Ipsen, but I'm using these Harvard sentences for Lorem Ipsen. And so what I want to do, but I also don't know, like these were come up with in the 60s. So I don't know, by the way, how's everybody? Hope you're doing well. Happy Friday. Friday, right? I have today off, so I'm kind of like, of which day it is. Uh, good, good. Excellent. Uh, but yeah, so what I want to do, so I also want to take these sentences and then there's another thing that's available now called AlexJS that looks for insensitive words, basically. So slave, not the best word to use when you're doing examples and stuff. Um, <laughs> doo -doo. The, so what I want to do is I want to take the Harvard sentences, I want to run them through this AlexJS thing, and then what I want to do is just build a page on my site, which I have to remember how to build pages on my site, because I moved it over to Gatsby a little while ago, and I don't actually remember how to build pages on it. Um, but then just build a little thing that lets you like click a button to randomize and get random numbers of sentences for AlexJS. So I, I don't know how far I'm going to go on that, because um, I want to go back to the Google code thing as well. Uh, and we'll go from there. So, and also I don't know if I want to, I want to play with this basically first and then we'll see what happens uh, is the, is the thing. The, so I installed, so I installed it here and then all I'm going to do is why is my desktop have a virtual environment on it? That's not really what I want to have happen. Get rid of that. I don't. I don't want that to be there. Okay. Don't know why I had that up there. Um, but actually, let's do this. Let's go into the workshop. Harvard sentences. Harvard sentences, and then um, raw sentences. Dot md. We'll do as a markdown file. And we're just going to snag them all. And like, uh, so let's look, see if we can find these as a grep. Why does that look different? Everything looks different right now. List 
Um, I have also moved. I'm using a new keyboard, or a relatively new keyboard. So everything's like it's a mo like the key mappings are all different, and all the keys are in different places. So it takes me a little while to figure out what's what. So that finds that, and then slash in. Slash is in a very different place, by the way. And then slash in. So if we regex that out, there you go. There's all the sentences. Like, I don't care about like which, li oh, yeah, whatever. Um, is that it? I should have done slash D question mark or slash D slash D question mark, whatever. Replace all, there we go. Zip. So now we've got our sentences. And I'm just, I'm gonna do a quick scan. Okay, that looks good. So 720 sentences. Okay, that's a bunch of ones to play with. Um, no Moonlander, now that I bought it. It is a Moonlander. Totally a Moonlander. It's awesome. It's just, it takes some getting used to. <laughs> I'm, I'm mostly used to it, but I've, I've switched a couple keys recently. Um, and uh oh hi dario by the way uh oh god let's put that back there also that's slightly off i don't like that it's covering up just a little bit there we go uh yeah so i changed the mapping i think i've changed the mapping now north of 80 times um the the biggest one that got me is the arrow keys like it doesn't like the way that it puts the arrow keys i didn't like at all so I've shifted the arrow keys so that I have to hold a modifier key to get to the arrow keys, which I like, but I'm getting used to. But I've been playing around a lot with that to figure out where I want to have it. Um, and so it's like, uh, and then also I, I, I burn myself a little bit because I switch back and forth between a Mac and a Windows machine. And I'm, I have the Windows machine set up differently. So I, I, when I play some games on the Windows machine, I switch some of those keys too. So like, it's not a good, like, I'm not helping myself, I guess was the easiest way to say it. Um, but so like my arrow keys are up here on layer two. So I have to hold down K to get to the arrow keys. And then, oh, wait a minute. My shift key isn't in here yet. Something's wrong. This isn't the latest one, I don't think. That was actually a problem for me because I was trying to sh do shift. Ah, whatever, it's fine. I think it's there. Um, that is not the latest one. Whatever. Uh, and yeah, so I'm gonna do a little coding. The so I did I did the um, I got the Google Fubar challenge. And so I did the first version of it, but I want to redo the first version of it where you basically make this big list of primes. Um, but I kind of want to do this. I want to see if I can burn through this uh, creating a list of sentences. Like I'm looking for a good list of, of lorem ipsum sentences uh, to do. And so I've got this Alex.js thing that we can throw at this. Um, this may go quick. Like I'm probably going to bounce through this pretty quick. Um, but if we go here and then we do Alex raw sentences, if we spell raw, right? Good Lord, I can't spell it right now. Why is that not auto-completing? Well, where's that file? Uh, somewhere I saved a file called raw sentences and I don't know where I saved it. Let's see if we can find it. Save as. Probably on the desktop itself. Oh, I haven't saved it yet. It's just, it said raw sentences MD up there. What? I don't understand what's happening. Oh, well, there it goes. All right, let's see what that says. Yeah, so. And I don't know if I want to mess with this too much. Um, Cause there's a whole bunch of these and like, and so if I really wanted to look at these, 
Well, I could just grab, I mean, like, I could just run greps over these or whatever, reg X, and find these. But, like, reconsider using white, it may be profane. Like, I want to see that in context to know if it's, like, profane. Like, just, just using these individual words doesn't necessarily mean they're a thing. But, like, I wouldn't mind changing out his, him, those with they and them or, or people or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, see, I want to go. Th I want to go through these. It, it, so it's nice to have this list, but I'll. I'll. That's gonna be more of a manual thing. So we aren't gonna do that. Um, we're gonna go back to Python and PyCharm, and that's where I've mapped keys differently, and I can't get to it. Okay, so here's where this is. Um, I got the Google Fubar code challenge thing. So the first one that I need to do is I need to come up with a list or as a string that is only prime numbers, but all the prime numbers. And so you can see I, I've done the first version of it here, but I want to go do a different version of it because um, I think there's a better way to do it. And I'm like, I'm not at all worried about Google recruiting me, whatever. Like, I just think it's their fun little projects. I was actually working on the advent of code projects before I got this. And I was like, ooh, other fun tools to play with. Um, but so here's the start of this. So two's a prime, three's a prime, five, seven, 11. So you just keep adding, you just keep concatenating all the prime numbers together. And then until you get a number that's 10,004 numbers long, then you drop an index in there or find, you select one by an index and grab the that number plus four numbers. So I spent a bunch of time figuring out how I wanted to do this first version of generating the string because generating the string is the main thing grabbing the index and then grabbing four files, four files at four files, four characters after that, easy enough. But so the way that I did this was through um, the sieve of Erethosothenius, um, which is a way to basically find all the prime numbers in between two and whatever however far you want to do it and so that's what i used to create this array that i then looped through the indexes of the array and and found them but really what it, but the trick is i kept so i kept adding numbers to the array because I, I needed to know like i didn't know how many prime numbers to run through until i got ten thousand numbers um on my phone you might want to add programming or another tech really oh really I used to have programming. Thank you. Uh, what am I going? I must have biffed something. Tournament English, whatever. Channel here. I don't think it matters if I show any of this stuff, but I'll just throw it over here anyways. Uh, yeah, give me one second. I appreciate that. Also, we're going to mute that so it doesn't echo back on itself. Uh, oh yeah, it only has English and IRL. Well, that's super weird. I must not have saved it. Whatever, programming, that's fine. Cool, I appreciate that. I'll, I'll look at that for real later. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll add some other ones. Programming, live coding, whatever. Uh, but cool, so we've got this. But so now what I want to do is go is take a different approach. And what I want to do with this different approach is I want to look, I'm going to use this a similar methodology here of, of examining a number to see if it's prime. But I'm going to, and by the way, all this stuff, like the answers to all this stuff are out there, but this is the like, it's a program exercise. I want to see if I can do it. Um, but so what I'm going to do is use this kind of as an example, but instead of running through the numbers linearly this way and figuring out, like giving an end number to start with, I'm going to start with an end number and then backtrack it and then, and then look at the prime numbers prior to it using the same methodology to determine if the number that I'm looking at is prime. And then we'll look at the next number. We'll look at all the numbers prior to it and figure out if this one's prime. And the way that you do that is you look at the numbers before it and you multiply by two, or you, you keep going two times whatever the number is. So two times three, 
three times three, four times three, five times three, six times three, right? So you go up. And if you hit the if you hit the number, it's not prime because it's a you know, it's got a multiple of a thing other than a one in itself. So like this is it's a math problem, is really what it is, but it's also coming up with the the algorithm to to do the math. So, anyways, that's all cool. Um so I'm just gonna comment all actually we're gonna do this. We're gonna call this solution two. Yes, please add to pi or add to get, whatever. User bin. Oh, Python 2. So the other thing I need to do, I'll do that later. Uh, the the code sample that they want is actually in Python 2. They, they're going to run it in Python 2, not in Python 3. I'm going to build it in Python 3 just because I'm there already and I don't want to mess with switching it and then I'll switch it later. Don't need to do it on stream. Um, so class um, ID builder. And then so I've got I've got a little bit of an idea about how I'm going to do this based off the other one. And see, this is where the keyboard is definitely going to fight with me. By the way, sorry, I can't remember. Are you a fan of Python or are you not a fan of Python? I know it's one way or the other. Um, or maybe you're just, or somebody else on the stream, uh, on your stream in your chat is, I think very much not a fan of Python, if I remember right. Uh, but I can't remember. So hopefully they are a fan of Python, but I don't think that's the way it goes. Uh, okay, and then we're gonna make a test file here because we wanna have some tests. Import unit test, class, test, ID, builder. Unit test, test case, pass it for now. One of these days I'm gonna set up a little, and there's a hundred things out there that do this already, um, a little thing where I just drop in like the name and have it just build all this stuff for me. Because this is all just boilerplate, right? Lord Zader, okay. Yeah, I, I was pretty sure it was somebody there who was just like, not a fan of it. Um, like, I came from Perl, so like, I'm digging Python. I think Rust is gonna be my next language. Uh, when I start messing with it or I start messing with something else because um, I know basically I'm on a discord another discord uh, where some folks are into rust and the thing I like about that is they like it a lot but more to the point I've got access to people who know about it and that's super valuable right uh, okay cool so tests no tests are passing because we don't have any tests so now what I want to do and this is also one of the things that I like um yeah, data science. And so I work with a data science team. Um, and that's, I see Python kind of all over the place and like pandas is used for stuff, um, but having it, yeah, for a giant scalable thing, not so much. Though I'm curious to see, so like you can run Py Python and Amazon's lambdas. I'll bet like using lambda, like lambda scale as well, right? So I would expect that you could see some good if you do the, the, the Lambda moduli type stuff or serverless microservices, whatever you want to call it, like that probably does some pretty good stuff. Um, and we actually do some of that stuff, but like none of the stuff that I do is taking, is needs to scale particularly hugely. Um, we're, I'm not working at giant scale. Uh, so I'm just gonna start at the end. So I'm gonna do basically what's an integration run at this point. So def test um, prime string. So this is kind of the way that I like doing testing, which is expected equals, and then we actually have a good prime string for us. 
Well, I'm just going to use this one. Because I think I closed my file. Uh, whoops, that didn't work. 237, 11, yeah, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17. Right, that's all of them. That wasn't too bad. I could have just grepped out all the spaces in that and had that going. And then result. So the other way that I do testing just to make sure that my tests are wired properly is actually run it green first with hard coded. Uh, assert equal. Expected. Result from that. So good, one test passed. So now we can actually do this and we need to set up def set up global id builder id builder equals solution v2 dot id builder right i think that's how we do this and then we do this i'm also not that great at this stuff um like I, I have, I've been around code for a long time, but I don't actually have that much experience with it. So like lots of stuff that I do, I'm like, I don't know if this is the right way to do it or not. Um, it, it works, but it's like, I don't know if it's like the right way to do it. Uh, okay. So that's testing. That's passing. That's cool. And then what we're going to do down here is we're going to go result equals IDB, um, Prime strength. By the way, feel free to if you see things that are weird or suggestions, like I'm into it. Like I, I will I take zero offense at that. I love seeing other ways to do stuff and getting uh getting things. So this is gonna break because prime string doesn't exist. Uh I'm gonna move these over. I'm gonna keep our solution one alive for now. But then all I'm gonna do here again is hard code. Oh, actually, do I want that? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this as a method right now. And this is another one that I've been talking with some people about about when to use methods and when to use variables and like all the other stuff. Um, and then kind of go there. Um, oh, the GDD style stuff, yeah. Uh, and then like, so there's this woman named Sandy Metz who I went to one of her. It was a Ruby practical object oriented development in Ruby courses or workshops. It was like three days. But she just kind of had this process, this real, not strict, but like real regimented process of just walking through stuff like this. And I found it super valuable, um, especially again, because I'm not like I don't code all the time. I'm not like a coder coder. So it's like anything I can get to have help me helps. Um, but so like part of that process is we just return the actual like her one of her big things is stay one step away from green so if i run this this should be green nope see that's the other reason what did i do oh i put an equal there didn't i try that so if i run this so now i'm one step away from green so i can always roll back to that whenever i'm doing anything um yeah, and I, I like it. Like, it's all these little, like, she has these these guidelines of, like, don't, basically don't make things too big and too complicated. Um, and this helps that because you, like, get down to those little nuggets of code. And, like, I really dig that. Um, cool. Have a good one. We'll see you. Uh, all right, so we've got that coming in. And then, so this gives us our backstop of the thing that we're targeting for. So... Now we need to build the string, right? And the, so the, the other thing that we want to do now is test prime array. And again, I'm going to bounce around on this. So this may, this like, I'm probably going to make more stuff that I need to and then come back. Uh, but that's okay. So expected... So for this, the way that I'm going to do this array, 
is I'm going to make an array of these numbers. And the first time I did it, I made a giant array or list and just had false and true at the index points to figure out which number or which indexes were primes or not. And I guess I could do that again, but I'm kind of interested in this idea of running it this way and then collapsing it down as just a join. So we're gonna try it this way and see what happens. Um, so same thing, result. Self. Assert equal uh, expected result. That'll pass, we hope. There we go. And then we're gonna do this. Result equals IDB prime array. Which is basically the same thing as a string. It just doesn't have the join on it, but that's okay. And and this is where it's one of those, I gotta, it's always interesting for me to figure out how to do the jump to get into the actual code. And I think this might be it to start with. So now we now we can actually apply the logic in here. Um, to start with, we're just gonna grab the ray. We're gonna make sure we're passing. So that's passing, that's cool. And we can drop this. So now we get to actually build the thing. And the way that I think I'm gonna build this is, so prime array, so it's gonna start with two. Um, base array is two. And I actually need to pass in a number here, which I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that yet. Cause I wanna, I need to build kind of the algorithm itself. And I, I don't necessarily wanna have that coming in yet, but maybe I do. Nah, not right, not yet. So, so what we could do, I need an is prime function. Um, I'm just gonna throw all this stuff in one place right now, and then we'll we'll hack it back out later, because uh, this is kind of implementation detail land. So. Target number is, I'm just gonna do three to start with. So for existing prime in base array, I'm gonna, these names will change, but this is what'll work for now. So we're going to look at the number. So what, okay, yeah, so what we do is we just multiply by two. So while Hmm, let's see, what's the right way to do this? So, check number is existing prime. We're gonna load that up, and there's gonna be a better way to do this, I'll bet. And then while check number, okay, I do wanna, I do wanna pull this out to its own thing. But I need to have, except I need this, I need to bounce off of this array is the way that I want to do this. So that kind of needs to exist. Cause like it's, I, I'm checking the existing primes based off the prior stuff that comes to it. So I can't just send, I can't just have a function where I say, is this a prime? And 
have it know that without all the rest of this stuff. So I'm going to keep this in here for now. Uh, I'll go look later, at, or as I look through this, and we'll see if there's a way to pull this out. But for now, this is just, and this is one to, once again, kind of one of those Sandy Metz things, like do the quickest, dirtiest thing you can do to get stuff passing. And then from there, you can go back and refactor. So red, green, refactor, right? So for existing prime in the base array, we're going to load it. And then while the check number is less than the target number, and this is actually okay. Like normally we would try and bump this by two, but really what we want to do is so existing prime. While the check number is less than the target number. Uh, so then we want to do if no if if so if we do that then we're gonna do Mm, so I need to do times two, times three, times four, times five. So I actually need to do, so there's the check number. No, so that's the existing prime. And then what we're gonna have is multiplier. How do we do, so I could do this as a range. Like in a range you can do I want to do a for loop and I want to uh, extend, I want to jump every two. And I know I could do that with for loop, Python, multiple update. That's not at all a good way to say that, but like multiple indexes, multiple weights, loops and sequences, here we go. And I could do it with four, like while one equal, while x equals one and then do x equal plus equals two or whatever list range for loops oh wait you can can you do a range that doesn't end. That's not the one I wanted, but that's the one I got. Okay. The range of integers end at stop minus one. Yeah. So is there, can you do Where's the actual documentation? Thought I brought it up. Cause if you got, if I could just do like, so what I'd look for is a range. Range. No, oh, it's not bringing me to the docs. Seems like that should be the docs. But I thought, I thought there's a, like. Sequence types, range. See, why don't I get to this? Start, okay, so start and stop are both required. I guess you just do a while loop and then just bump it by two. I was just wondering if there was like an actual thing that you could do that's like, you know, range, step by two or whatever. Um, start, stop. The iron string structure must be integers. 
if the step is omitted, defaults to one. If start is omitted, it defaults to zero. If step is zero, value error is raised. Negative step, the range is still determined. The range will be empty if R zero range, but ranges absolve values larger than max size are permitted. Range object will always take the small, same small amount of memory, no matter how, how big. Okay. Testing a range. Okay, we'll just do a while loop. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. So, base array of two. So, we're always going to start with base array of two. We're going to append to this base array. Um, Target, yeah, so this actually isn't primary right now, but this this will be okay for getting us started. So target number three for existing prime and base array. So we're going to loop through all those. And then for existing prime and base array, so we're going to do multiplier equals two while existing prime times multiplier is greater than target number. We're going to keep going. And then we're going to do multiplier at the end of the while loop. We're going to bump that by two. Because we uh, no, we're going to bump that by one because we want to go times two, times three, times four, times five. Okay, so. I'm going to just run this for a second and see if we've got the, the basic idea here. So existing prime and what we want is greater than or equal. And also we're going to do two, I need to see a couple numbers here, two, three, five. We start the multiplier at two. Target number seven. Uh, target number, yeah, let's do seven, whatever. Existing prime time. So we need to actually capture that number. So base array. So while, and then. Check number. See, this is not efficient at all, but, or not like, I feel like there's gonna be a better way to do this, but this, I wanna get, first get the thing working. So, while check number is greater than target number, print that. And then we're gonna redo this. There is 100% a better way to do this. And I'm not even sure this is gonna work. Whoops. Yeah, let's stop that. Because we wanted a less than, not a greater than. Four, six, six. Let's, okay, that actually makes sense. Uh, we can actually debug this one. So that should show us some nice stuff. 
especially when we do the right one. Debug work across things. Yeah, so check numbers four, existing primes two, multipliers three. Uh, we put that in the wrong place. See, I'm not as good at the debug stuff yet. Like I could do that, but like, it's easier for me to just spit all this stuff out. Uh, target. It's target number. Multiplier is multiplier. And check number is check number. Target seven, multiplier two, check numbers four. And then base and existing prime is the other one that we want. So existing prime. Yeah, so we're looking at two, target seven. Multiply four. Yeah, yeah, so this is cool. This this gives us the, the base of what we need. Because we're looping through all these primes, and then these are we're looping through all these primes. Yeah, it doesn't try five because five times two is larger. So like it doesn't, yeah, this doesn't trigger. That's already fault. Okay, perfect. So then what we need to do is just do the check in here. and say, if it's the same, if check number equals the target number, then is not prime. Oh, if check number, oh, wait, wait, so if check number, so while it's less than, is prime equals true. And then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through these if at any point, if the check number equals the target number, this isn't the way I was thinking about doing it, but it's going to, I think it's going to work. If it equals the target number, we set is prime equals false and then break. And then I like having stuff in his else's. So, oh, come here. Why aren't they going up? What's going on? There we go. That definitely didn't work. Uh, so is prime is true while the check number is less than the target number.
I don't think that's going to be it. See, that should be flipping it to false. But it doesn't look like it's getting there. It's not getting there. Why isn't it getting there? So while the check number is less than the target number, so existing prime, our check number is four, our target number is seven, so that's less than. Oh, because it's got to, we need to jump it one more. Like it needs to go past it by one in order to see if it's on it. Or we could do it this way. Hang on. So we start with it as false. Ah, no, that's not going to work. Um, if check number equals a target number. that Okay, that's not right. That's not right. It's not if it equals it. It's... Except it would be if it equals it. Wait a minute. Hang on, I think I'm doing this in a crazy way. Let me bounce all this stuff. Cause re so really it's just if there's a remainder. I don't care about the multiplier. Like I just need to divide ex existing prime for existing prime and base array. Target number seven. If Target number mod existing prime print prime. But you would need to do you need to do it this way. Hang on. So we're gonna we're gonna start with the assumption that it's true. And then we're gonna loop through all the numbers in the base array and then run I just want to see the word show up here for a second prime 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 cool so it's going through all the existing ones target number is python if not no uh If we don't get a remainder is what we want to have. So target number of seven. Oh, that one is prime. Okay, so that's right. So if we do eight. Uh, okay. Hang on.
no, that's not gonna work. So we need to we need to loop through. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, wait, wait. So this is not prime. So as soon as we see one thing match. It's going to hit not prime and break. And just to watch that. Be neat if there's a way to, and I'm sure there's a way to do this. You could make a way to do this, but to just like pass a list of variables and have it like dump the list of variables for you. Um, I'm sure there's a function that you could write that does that. In fact, it's probably already exists as a module. So existing prime. target number it should have it should have broke right here because eight is divisible by two. Oh, no, no, if not, that's what we want. So if there's not a remainder, it means that it went in there directly without a remainder, and that's cool. And so we should see existing prime two goes into eight. It's not, so there's, that's how we make the determination of it's not a prime. So if we run through this list, And we call, if we start with assumption that it's true, and then if we come down here and make this false, oops. So eight prime equals false, seven prime is gonna be true. We did this right. Yeah, because it loops through all the existing primes and if it makes it through the list, it adds it. Or if we make it through the list, then we'd add it. And we just have to make sure we don't call it on itself. So eight's still gonna be no go. Cause it hits two. Nine will hit on three. Nine hits on three, so that becomes false. And then 10 will hit on five. Well, 10 will hit on two. What's gonna hit on five? 15, 20, 25 so 25 will hit on five there's other numbers before that but i just want to see this hit on five just to see if i got this right and really what i should do is this should have been a test thing that i've got yeah it hits on five okay cool okay that's kind of neat so this is like a reverse of the sieve But yeah, so you've got to have you've got to have this existing array 
to get there. And this is weird because I'm not sure how to break this out, how to test it. Um, so we've got the primer. Oh, yeah. So we need to have that as an internal thing. So that's cool. So primary A equals two. And then really what we need to have is, okay, so here's here's how we can test this, is add numbers to prime array. And we need to start with, It has to start with a base array. So we start with the prime array there. And then expected is going to be two, three. Well, and actually, let's do two, three, five, seven. So that's our base array, and then we're going to end up with 11 on top of this. And I'm going to test this two different ways. I'm going to test it where we actually hit a number, or we actually add a number, and then one where we don't add a number. Because it'll it's going to be unstateful in terms of like you can, as long as you've got the array, you can add any number over the array and see if it's prime as long as you've gone through all the numbers prior. I'm not sure if that made sense. Um, Results that self start equal expected results run it. Uh, we're gonna take that's fine, we can leave that there. That's cool. I'm all right with it. I don't understand why it didn't just run that one though. There you go, just that one. Okay, cool. And then so result IDB, whoops. Add number to prime array. I'm gonna call it list. It should be list. Eleven. So if we run this, that's not going to exist. No problem. Def that self that number to add number to check. I don't like just calling it number. Like, I guess I can call it underscore number. There we go. I don't like it either. Candidate number. How about that. So then we can put all the rest. So we've already set up prime array. So this is actually where we'll do all this stuff. Oh, and also the result. So we really just run this. But that's okay. We can start with this. And then the result is going to be ID primary. IDB primary. 
So again, I'm gonna fail this. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna hard code this for a second just so we've got it. Because I want the I want the test to pass. So I've got my backstop. Failed. See, I want this to pass. One's positional argument, two were given. I feel like that was not going to be the fix. Base array is not defined. Okay, let's back all this stuff out for a second. Okay, now we're passing. Cool. Okay, that all looks good. Now we can actually add this back in. So is prime is going to be true for existing prime in self prime in this. I'm going to leave that out. Target number. So that's really candidate number. Thought that was off by one. All right, so let's just run this and see if that compiles. Does then if is prime, so when we get to the end of this, We're going to append the candidate number. All right, so this is still, still hard coded. So that should still pass. But I think if we take this out, completely forgot how to comment stuff right there for a second. Boom, still passing. Okay. So that's how we add numbers to the prime list. And Add number to prime list that does not go. So we want to we want to check one that doesn't end up on the thing. So like prime array comes in, we want the exact same thing coming out if we do ten. I think this is gonna pass. Cool. Yeah, so we're like the logic's already in place to to get this working. So I theoretically I could have done a thing where I only did the logic just to get that first part working without doing the second part, but I'm not actually sure how you would do that. But that's okay. So we're we're testing both of those things. So this is how we add the numbers. And I'm not sure we need this prime array thing anymore. And then so, Test prime string. 
results. Length equals eight. So I think it's going to fail now because we're calling a weird thing on it. So I'm going to test, get rid of this test prime array. So we're going to add numbers. Ling th. That is a mistake. I make a lot. All right. So, because now what we want to do is make the prime string, and this needs to have a, a length call on it. Okay, so we're returning a hard-coded value right now. That's cool. Um, now I got to figure out how to make it go with like, you know, not that. Oh, that's there. Oops. You know, I, I have to build the whole thing to get to that number, I think. But so... Um, Candidate number equals three while self prime string length is less than length. What do we call it? Add number to prime list. Candidate number. Candidate number is goes up to one. So while it's less, so the first thing we need to do is while it's less than the length. And so prime string So this is going to make the assumption that there's always going to be at least one fire across this. Self prime string equals nothing join self prime array. All right, let's just see if that compiles. Candidate number equals candidate number. Try that. Still broke. Sequence item zero. Expecting string instance int found. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, bummer.
So, oh, yeah, because I've been using integers and now I'm trying to collapse them to join list Python int. Let's see if there's a way to do this. Calling string is a Pythonic way to convert something to a string. You might want to consider why you want a list of strings. You can instead keep it as a list of integers and only convert the integers to strings when you need to display them. For example, if you have a list of integers, then you can convert them one by one into for loop and join them with this. But see, so you're doing that every time you're you're doing the thing. Ah. Hmm, I don't like that either. Ooh, what's this? One reason you might do this, so map string my list. I don't totally understand map. Except I think it just processes everything and makes it, like it loops through everything in the list, right? And then applies the thing. And this is, so this is still going to, it's still converting every single time, which is kind of a bummer. Like you can make two, you can do this by looping over the index. This would be fine. Um, I'm just looking at whatever. This is just fun ways to play with this stuff, right? So let's see if that actually gives us the string that we're looking for. Oh, wait. That's fine. The work? No. We're close though. Eight. While it's less than that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My test was wrong. Got it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so while it's less than seven, we should still see the same thing because it has to add 13 to it. If we do six, it's going to choke because there's, there's only one digit being added instead of two, right? So in order to get the next one to get a length of seven, we have to add two characters to get 13. So that's cool. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, I'm actually going to nuke all this. Bad number to prime list. See, there'd be some fun ways to do this with the indexes. Because, like, this just looks like, I don't know, it just looks like a lot of stuff. One, two, three, four, five, six lines. Yeah, and so, like, really, like, you could make that just update the thing or whatever and call it. That's fine. Um,
and really don't need this. We actually don't need to make this an instance variable. That should still pass. Oops. Somebody went infinite because he didn't change everything in one place, probably. Yeah, let's try this. That goes faster. Okay. Or that works. That's cool. I like this. Yeah, I'm trying to think if you could cut this down anymore. I don't have a good way to do that. And really, you could just do this. Nope, that's not true at all. Because we got to check and see if it is prime. Um, and it, so it'd be fun. Well, so like there's, there's probably a way to optimize this where you don't set this and you just bump out of the entire thing right here. But that would be a little like I'm not I'm not as big a fan of that. Like that's harder for me to read. But I'll bet I'll bet this would work. So we're gonna play with this for a second. So if I just do a return right here and then comment that out and move this over. Everything still passes, right? Because it's it's doing the same thing. So like once it sees a number that's not there it bumps out right now i'm breaking so it does the same thing and then i do a check down here to see if it's prime i think i do like this better actually that's not that's not bad at all that's that's readable This is funny because it's if not zero, then return or whatever. This isn't bad. Um, so when you build a prime string, you have to kind of create it every time. You start with a canon number of three. I mean, you only call this the once, right? So, or I mean, you can call this as many times as you want, but it's only going to build up to the length. While the length of prime string is less than the length. Yeah, it's going to add. So, you know, I don't think you really need to do less than equal there, but just in case. We're going to add the number and then we update the candidate number to one. See, here's where you could use an instance variable and like just have like the, the potential add variable or add number up there, but like this is more straightforward to me.
Yeah, and you have to do this join here to get it. I don't know how to make this any smaller. This this is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven lines. I I like I like the again the Sandy Metz thing of like trying to keep it like five lines or whatever for method. But and like you could pull some of this stuff out and make that happen. But you would still need to set this every time to empty. You'd still need to start your candidate number at a specific place. Like you got to set these two things in order to start to build the string. Or do you, well, or so you could do. You could grab the last number. No, you couldn't. I was going to say you could grab the last number in the array or in the list and use it as your candidate number or plus one for your candidate number, but that wouldn't work because if you add, like, if the candidate number is eight, or if you, if you, if the last number in the list is seven, you add one to it for eight and you try and add eight, that wouldn't add because it's not prime. So then you'd still be at seven for your candidate number or for your base number. So you'd add one to it again, it would still be eight. Still wouldn't work. Go back to seven. Keep rinse repeat. So I'm not sure how you would move that down. While length of the prime string is less than that. So that's. Add number to prime list, candidate number, candidate number, candidate number plus one. Yeah, this is all fine. Um, so then the last thing is going to be Uh, get ID. Def test. Get ID. Self. So I expect it, and they actually give us some examples. I love that tab complete works on this thing. <laughs> It, it kind of surprises me that it's not like a full thing and like I couldn't do Vim, you know, whatever. Uh, but that's would have been a bunch more stuff on their thing. So cat read me. Oh, actually help. Oh, it does have cat print file. Okay. I just did cat in general. Um, oh, I wonder what happens if we do edit read me. File not editable. Okay. They keep you from burning yourself. What was I doing? Uh, cat read me. So expected equals that. Nope. That is not copying. Cool. And then result equals IDB get ID for index zero. So that's going to die because that doesn't exist. We're gonna add that. Call 
call that ID index, return the wrong thing, just so I can watch it go for a second. This will crunch because of the wrong value. We want this to be a string coming back here. So there's that. And now we can make this go. Oops. ID index. There we go. Get ID for index. Self index. Right. Cool. So. Um, final index is going to be ID index plus, and they send string or they send, yeah, so they send an integer plus four. So we need it to be at least that length. Um, Base string is self prime string with a length of final index. Just make sure all the stuff is still compiling. It is. So, and then what we do is so what what's a good way to get, um. Can't you do that? No, you cannot. Oh, missed by one. Uh, actual missed by one. So plus five. And there's our thing. That's pretty cool. Uh, so the last, so the other test case is if we pass three, we want this. I'm just going to run both the test cases. So this will fail because it's got to have the wrong number. But there's a number that we're looking for. Oops. I don't know why it's not copying. Ta-da! There you go. So that is the solution, I believe, to problem one, or the first problem they threw my way, whatever. I don't know if they're different or not. Um, Should probably throw these up on GitHub at some point. Just, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, so I'll clean this stuff up. So the real trick is it's going to be, they want to have it. So I need to, I'm going to convert this to Python 2. Because I, I had just set it up as 3 under the assumption. Uh, I just, I, it wasn't even like a conscious assumption. I just set it up as 3 because I do stuff as 3 now. Uh, but in the little documentation here, uh, they talk about... 
constraints. Code will run inside a Python 7, 2, 7, 13 thing. All tests will be run by calling solutions function. Standard libraries are supported except for those. Input op output operations aren't allowed. Solution must be under 32,000 characters, including, yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's under that. I don't know how many 32,000 characters is, is, but I'm thinking 20 something lines is less. Uh, oh, I still have to do, I still have, actually have to call this. So they, they're gonna call it as just solution. Uh, so I need to, I'll have to change that because right now this is a class where you have to call the class and build a thing or whatever. Like this just needs to have a function. And so I may, I don't know. I guess I could raise these all up. But there would need to be this one global. I kind of like it as a class though. So I'll just have solution just pass off to the class. Uh, these aren't too bad. Like I, I still wish, I still feel like that maybe is a little way to mush this down a little bit. But I can't, I can't come up with it. Other than like, like, so you could hoist these, you could hoist the candidate number out. But again, once, like, if you call prime string, so I'm only calling prime string once, but like, it could be called more than once. Like, I don't know. Seems all right. That's cool. All right. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So that will do it for now. Uh, I'll probably come back on later tonight. 8.30 ish, maybe. I don't know. We'll see what happens uh, and go from there. But this is cool. Like I'm 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 liking this. These are fun little puzzles. Like I like these little these little puzzles like this. So we'll see what the next one is after we put this one in and see if it passes. Seems like it should pass. Like those two tests pass. Will all the tests pass? And that was well, so that. Yeah. So that's at zero. So I guess the other thing would be what happens if you call it whoops with 10,000 like i don't i don't know what the number needs to be but does it explode oh it freaked out Wait, why did that take so long? Was that just a hiccup? Oh, no, it's got to build a list of 10,000 numbers. That's why it took a minute. Uh, yeah, so five seconds. I'm going to assume that that's the right number. Uh, and the, but the, the thing that I'm really checking here is when you call 10,000, I get a five digit number coming after it. Because if I call, actually, if I call 10,000, this should actually, no, this should just work. However many you call, right? There may be a test case here that I'm not hitting. Yeah, there's there's actually one other thing that I'm not hitting on this that I don't have a specific way to test at the moment. I mean, you I could find a way to test it. But when I'm making this prime string length, it needs to be length plus five. Because the the number the Which my thing, the actual number of the ID that you're sending back has to be five characters. So while the length, when you're requesting the length of the string,
I can choose myself now. So get ID for index. Get ID for index. We get the ID index. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, so I'm actually doing it. So final index. I'm, I'm, calling, I'm calling it right. Never mind. I'm okay. I'm already adding the five in there. I forgot where I was adding the five. It's being added. We're cool. I expect one of the things that they do calls a number in a way that if you aren't padding that five, that it that it misses. Um, that's my guess, but we'll see. Uh, I really hope they show us the test cases that they actually use and like some, I don't know, something. I'm not, I'm not sure what all they'll pass back. But this is cool. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to switch it to Python 2. I don't need to do that on stream because that's just going to be going through and like updating a couple things, hopefully not very many. And uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, and then I may need to make it its own function and possibly see about making, I don't know, see if I can make this functional, but like I'm, I'm still, I do stuff as objects and classes in Python. I don't do the function things. So I'm not as like scope mess with me earlier, uh, which I could go figure out and I may, but we'll see. In the meantime, y'all have a good one. Uh, take it easy and we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, till then, cheers.